Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Ross of the Gap with the Eye and I want to answer some questions. Let's do it. As usual, I like to take a couple questions and talk to you guys each month and answer some from Facebook, email, Instagram, wherever you send them. And I've got three right here and I think they are pretty good questions to uh, to answer and I have a couple and I have one especially that was really, really um, asked. So I recently made my review video about my new Enduro AT313 tripod and especially when I mentioned the, my new Manfrotto ball head, which I'm still, which I think is really nice. I'm still kind of up in the air about it. It's, this is a weird system I'm using kind of. But um, I was asked like, why did I continue to get a ball head? You know, what's the difference between a pistol grip or a ball head? You know, why did I choose another ball head? Well, to me, it's simple. I actually do love the feeling, comfortability and everything of a pistol grip but it doesn't have the best hold, especially if you're on a little bit of an angle, if you're trying to do something uh, differently, it is more known of a fact that a, um, a ball head will stand better, will hold better, it's a little tighter. But it's uh, obviously it's not as ease of use if you're trying to use like a pistol grip because the pistol grip, you grab it and you can easily go. These you gotta you know fumble with a couple knobs and everything like that. Um, a pistol grip gives you something easier to work with without having to adjust and do all that kind of stuff. You can do it all with just one little hold and move around. The other, these other ones you kind of kind of fumble around a little bit, but obviously when you know what you're doing with it, it's not a huge issue. So pistol grips are very convenient. They're very simple to use and they're not as confusing. You know, they have the levels on them and stuff like that, but the ball heads, they do tend to hold better weight and are stronger of a grip and can get you know better angles if you're trying to do something, especially if you maybe you're doing product photography, you're trying to shoot straight down. A lot of the ball heads have a little divot that gives you a 90 degree angle like this Manfrotto one does if you want to do something special. But if with a pistol grip head, it might not do as well and your camera might slip, it won't stay as sturdy. So they're very easy. A lot of people in real estate like to use pistol grips and everything like that. They're simple, they're easier. Um, but a lot of other places, people love ball heads. So I prefer ball head tripods. I was thinking about switching to a pistol grip, but I really looked into it and I really tried out some things and I think it just holds weight better. Another popular question is how do you shoot at noon harsh light? Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is extremely difficult if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have the right stuff. The one thing you wanna avoid completely is shooting in direct sunlight because you get models that will go like this. You know, it is very bright, it's hard to squint, especially me, I'd, I'd be like this 100% because of my eye. But um, you know, harsh sunlight is not gorgeous lighting. It's horrible, it's harsh, it doesn't look good. You know, there's deep shadows and everything like that. That can give you the raccoon eyes, a top-down look, all that kind of stuff. You want to avoid that. Another one thing I also want to say is, you know, people will think that going like under trees and everything like that, you know, will will look better. While yes, because you're diffusing the light a little bit, I'll cover that in a second. But you might notice that you might have like a couple little light streaks on the face or something like that. That is called dappled lighting. That is also not attractive. That is also not preferred when you're shooting your typical portraits or anything like that. So you want to avoid direct harsh sunlight, but you also want to avoid uh, dappled, uh, dappled lighting when you're getting a mixed lighting on the face where you have the darks and, and uh, you know and, and the brights from the sun you want because it will definitely throw your meter off it's hard to it's really hard to work with actually dappled lighting I would never ever prefer that uh, whatsoever so there are two main things you could do one you could buy a reflector and it's as easy enough as having your camera you know it's holding your camera here you have a bigger reflector and you just really hold it to block out the sun or you set up like a light stand with a clamp and you hold that and it blocks out the sun on your subject. So that way your background is nice and, um, you know, your background is nice and, and bright and your subject is more diffuse, uh, diffuse and a more controlled lighting. And it's just something better, it's more flattering. And if you wanna add a little bit of flash, then you're starting to get into bouncing out the ambient light with flash. And that is something that you should, I don't wanna say you should, that is something that a lot of people aspire to do and to learn with uh, off-camera flash and everything like that with fill flash. And one of the last questions that I was asked and it came from a couple people, especially when I made my uh, event photography tips video, the one I just did the other week, and it was how do you get into event photography gigs? Now my answer is pretty much gonna answer any question about how you get gigs uh, Anyway, except from the typical like, oh, just go on Facebook type of thing. You know, like I explained in that video, I would highly recommend go watching that as well. It's my event photography tips tutorial video where I talked about gear, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it really comes down to asking. A lot of companies, a lot of companies need marketing. They need something to show people that they are more than just a company that they're trying to get their message about. Maybe uh, their new pharmaceutical thing out there or their new travel thing out there or something like that. Whatever, whatever the company is, whatever it does, um, whatever it holds, 
they need to get that message out there and they need some sort of publication. So this is what you can do. You could go to them, you could you could show them, uh, you, you know, if you've done it before, or, you know, other people's works, or you could show them that this is what I can provide for you. Give a comparison, maybe someone, you know, maybe their competitor or someone kind of around the same genre and just show them like, hey, this could be you, you should give this a shot and maybe this could be, you know, this could be helpful. Um, you know, cold calling is, is really kind of difficult now because you really won't get anywhere, but emailing, you know, especially a support or contact or human resources or something like that can be beneficial. I have had a couple, I don't want to say a ton, I've had a couple jobs just by cold calling, but my main thing is knowing people. People work in businesses, people work in these places, these companies, these corporations, and you you know people who work there. You ask. Eric Cross the guy with the eye. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully, I answered your questions and answers well. As always, you can email me questions at eric at ericrossi.com. Hit me up on Facebook. All the links and descriptions, all that kind of stuff will be below at the end slate and all that kind of stuff. Answer questions every day. You know, I try to do it at least once a month. I'm going to try maybe do it more every month. I'm starting up a uh, photography or tech podcast where I'm going to be more personal. I want to answer more questions than just talk about the latest stories, which I'll mention maybe a favorite story or two. So stay tuned for that as well. Ask those all over the place. Keep an eye out.